Okay, I, we start with the ritual of, oh, the mic seems to be working. Oh, okay, well, um, uh, yeah, yeah, the subject today is, is language translation, and uh, uh, I think um, uh, all of you who are sufficiently old will remember that, that in the 1950s, one of the very first things that computers were uh, uh, supposed to be applied to was the trans uh, translating languages um, in, into English. In fact, you know, this is one of these things that that was it was predicted that uh, that by the 60s uh, we would have all all uh, uh, documents would be routinely translated by computer. Um, in those days, of course, people uh, didn't realize how hard some of the problems were, and but but still, uh, uh, it was so it was so common that. Uh, you know, AI meant artificial intelligence, and MT meant machine translation. Um, now, uh, I thought I'd start out today by showing you the current state of the art. Uh, um, I I looked at at my web page for for the 316 book uh, this morning on Netscape, uh, and and that the URL is here. Um, you know, it's my home page to them, 316.html, and I translated it into French. Using the automatic, uh, uh, automatic. Excuse me. Can't hear. It. So, using the automatic feature of, it's called Bobblefish. Um, and uh, so uh, you know, text the Bible day, three sixteen elucidate and so on. Um, it's not. It's not terribly bad uh, as a first crack. Uh, in, in fact. For, for, uh, considering that this was done really quick by by a computer, it gets a little funny though when you when you, when it tries to translate um, the joke that I told you last time. Um, okay, here's the English the English version, and and at, you know have, some have called Canoe's approach the the way of the cross section. You remember that joke? So uh, uh, you know, some of you do, and uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, so here it is. Uh, 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 some have called the way the okay now of course there, there, there's a bug so if we, there's a bug it, the, uh, the program doesn't realize that re reverse uh, quotes are, are, are punctuation marks and so it didn't know it didn't know that this was a word uh, you know uh, uh, the so, so so you have to realize that that's kind of a noisy thing but so it's the approach uh, approach to the Knuth um, de la coupe I, I, I don't know exactly what, what that means in in French but it probably it doesn't have the same pun as it did in England um, there was a there was there was some more fun on the next page uh, uh, I had a I had a uh, one of these blurbs uh, of, uh, of promotion by by William Sloan Coffin, the, the minister of the Riverside Church in New York City, and and and, and he comes up, uh, uh, you know, as the coffin uh, of, <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, you know, R R R Riverside Church comes out of Eglise de Rive. It's pretty good, and uh, uh, okay, so. So, so there was the English. Same thing happens in German, and Anna will be able to understand the, the, uh, 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 you know, how good the German is here. Um, you know, Einige haben Knuth on Herring. Here they take it and combine it into another word. Suffice to Schnitt. And and once again. Um, uh, Sloan is 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 Zarg William Sloan but Riverside here fairly good. Okay. <laughs> now, um, any, anyway, uh, uh, as far as as far as I'm concerned, I, I learned Latin in high school, and then I learned Russian and German in college. Uh, I never was very good at speaking other languages, but uh, but over the years, I've I've gotten. Uh, uh, my, my input mechanism has gotten reasonably good. It's just the output I have a lot of problem with. Um, but uh, when I, uh, I don't know if it's still true, but uh, I, in order to get a PhD, I had to have two languages. Uh, is that still true? The requirement like that? No, yes. no more. Here's the here's the provost telling me. Okay, so uh, 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 so I, uh, you know, I did Russian and German for 
my PhD, they, for the German, I, I, I actually translated a math book, which is, which is a cop, I mean, it's pretty easy to translate mathematics, because there's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the vocabulary 50 words. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but it was a, it was more than 100 pages, and I tried to make it into into smooth English and so on. Uh, so, so I, that was my first uh, experience with with translation. And then since then, I've I, I've done lots of translation just as I'm working on on books where I have to understand s some article in in uh, in Russian or uh, or you know Spanish or or some some other languages. Um, uh, often uh, spend a lot of time with a dictionary. It'll be, it, it would be a lot easier with these uh, computer helps. Um, anyway, uh, 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 I do have a lot of experience, of course, in, in formal languages instead of natural languages. Um, the, uh, 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 one of the important uh, whole subfields in, in programming languages, of course, is compilers to take a, to take a uh, algebraic language and translate it perfectly into into a machine language, retaining exactly the exactly the true meaning of the of um, whatever the programmer has said in the formal language. Um, these these methods for formal languages uh, have been found to be only partially adequate for the languages of the real world. Um, and uh, today, what I'm talking about in in this lecture is is natural language, not formal language. For, formal languages are much too easy. Um, and in fact, uh, well, when I when I came uh, into the 316 project, then uh, uh, you know, many years after I'd written compilers and and got my PhD and so on, uh, then um, my first instinct was to to say, well, look, I know randomization is good, as we said last time, so this will be a good way to compare all the different translations of the Bible. Lots of translations of the Bible started coming out in. Um, in the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, so um, so I so I thought this is good because I don't, I, I get to compare I get to compare several dozen translations on these random verses that I've chosen, and I'll be able to find out which is the best translation, and, and I'll buy that one. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the first surprise was that that there was tremendous variability between the uh, between the different translations. I was expecting that the translations would be uh, would, would differ here and there, but that that pretty much uh, uh, it would be cut and dried as to what the what the meaning of the original uh, would be and, and how to express it in English. But in fact, uh, I almost I almost never got anything that looked very close at all between the two. I'll show you examples shortly. Um, um, but but the other thing that I found very soon, uh, even when I only had looked at uh, four or five translations, uh, in, when, I, uh, when I first tried this 316 experiment, um, was that uh, no, con no, no translation was consistently best. Uh, I, I, you know, each of the ones I looked at seemed to, be, uh, seemed to have its good moments and its bad moments. And, uh, you know, or, or at least cases from my point of view where, where uh, the one would shine uh, over the others, and then I turn to another verse, and it would be, and it would be reversed. Um, so um, uh, uh, th then, when I th when I started to work on the uh, on the idea of making a book out of it, um, I went to the Boston Public Library and other uh, other places like the Bible Museum in Boston, and and found as many different translations I could get my hands on, and I copied down, for each of the 316 verses, I copied down more than two dozen translations of each, uh, of each verse. And as I say, there was, a, there was quite a lot of variation. Um, and, uh, and I thought, my, my next idea was, that with each one, I would choose which of these uh, seemed to be the best, and then I would credit that translation uh, as being the one that I used for, for, for that verse. Um, but then uh, I started to worry about well maybe I, maybe it's copyright and I got to get permission and write a whole bunch of letters and maybe pay fees and whatever that sound that sounded bad so 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 I thought could I possibly translate it myself a um, uh, little bit of a problem since I don't know any Hebrew and I don't know any Greek uh, um, and so but but uh, uh, I think you know that the the Bible wasn't written in English um, it was written. Hebrew, Greek, and 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 a little bit in Aramaic. So, um, 
so, uh, uh, however, um, I, I, I actually decided that, look, I have these 25 translations there, um, and, and also I've got other resources that I can look at. Uh, I, only have, I only have 60 verses to work on. Um, that's, you know, that's less than one five hundredth of the Bible, and, and uh, so I can afford to put put, a, put uh, three four hours into e each verse, no problem. Just a few words. Uh, I should be able to look everything up in the, in the references I have, and besides, I can check it with the translations that I've already seen uh, to make sure that any you know any mistakes that I make would have been made by at least two experts. <laughs> um, so, so uh, now let me show you some of the some of the resources. Uh, in fact, I, I was fascinated by this, by this book when I first saw it. It's called The Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, and it counts every single word in the Bible. It was done in the 19th century, at the end of the 19th century. Let's see, well, the original printing was 1894, and, um, and in fact, you know, it even counts the, you know, you know every Every, but uh, with the, it doesn't, tell, it doesn't give you the context. It just tells you how many times it occurred in each verse. But, uh, uh, you know, every you know, out is only counted by, by verses. But uh, 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 I'll, show you the, I'll show you an example. I looked up the word uh, uh, for, well, sort of a word for compute. This is the word count. Can you see where it says count here? See also a count, counted, counteth, and so on. So... Um, uh, this is every place that the word count appears in the Bible um, w and w with this context. And, uh, well, I'm just kind of a guy that likes complete things, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but also, uh, I, I tried to find, I'm interested in sorting, so I tried to find out how, how Strong actually did the sorting on this, but I never been able to discover it. Uh, it uh, maybe if I look back into, into uh, you know, some something that came out at the time he might have been interviewed by a newspaper or something but I don't know how he how he did the sorting it's it's pretty massive job hello graduate students yeah <laughs> I, 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 I do know how the how the Oxford English Dictionary uh, uh, the guy did the sorting he I think he had about 10 children and and he had all the stuff on slips of paper and, and he had his kids doing it um, but uh, anyway this was a massive uh, this is a massive database and it was put into a computer and redone, uh, and very few uh, uh, errors were found. This was in the 80s when, when, when it was computerized. Excuse me. Why did he undertake it? Um, well, maybe he liked complete things too. Um, uh, you know, so here it says um, the present work is entitled the Exhaustive Accordance because it was the only one hitherto constructed that gives all the words and all the passages were there to be found. And in this respect, no concordance can ever be made more perfect. Okay. But I want to show you especially the numbers at the right-hand side here. See this, 3699, 5608, 2803. This is very important. It says this is the Hebrew word that was used for count here, word number 3699. And that, and, and uh, you know, 2803, for example. So if you could, at the back of the book, he has a, a Hebrew an Aramaic dictionary, and every Hebrew word is given a number. And 2803, you know, chashab, uh, has many meanings, but uh, actually I, I like this meaning because it you know, it's, means computing in a way. And, um, uh, but it also means, uh, well, think, regard, value, compute, make a count, conceive. But, but when people are doing mathematics, they, they tend to do, do some of this uh, reckoning. So, so um, um, I don't have to know e even, you know, what these Hebrew letters mean. Um, I, I just have to know 2803. <laughs> no, I don't have to know, I, I don't have to know the, uh, the alphabetic order. Um, and, uh, you know, actually, uh, uh, well, I, I recent, more recently I've had a, a several chances to go to Israel and, and, and there I can see the Hebrew letters, you know, on the, on the, on the ads and on the highways and so on, and, and, and I, I get to know almost all of them by now, but, but at that time I, I, I didn't, but still 2803, that I could do. And, um, and so you see 2803 is used for count here in, in, in uh, Leviticus 25:27, and also here in Job, so on. But the uh, other, uh, other words are, are used there. Um, 
Now, uh, but then I, I, at the end here, it'll tell me if I want to find all all places where where 2803 appeared, I should just look in the concordance under account, conceive, consider, cunning. Usually, it, there's only one one word to look under. In this case, there, there were lots of, a lot of them. But if but uh, you know, as I'm doing a translation and I and I come across a word, you know, there's only a, a fairly small number of words in the verses that I had to handle, and uh, I could find all occurrences of that word in the in the Bible. Well, now there's software that does this, and you you know, it's just hypertext, and you can click and get and and um, and uh, and, uh, and and find the Hebrew and, and and find your way to other you know next occurrence of this Hebrew word and so on. But at this time, I had I had Strong's, and the and and the italic numbers at the end here are the same thing, but that's for the Greek words when you get into uh, New Testament, and so the corresponding Greek words for count. One of them is is uh, this one here, I think, 20, italic 2233. Um, you know, you know I, I learned some Greek letters because I was in fraternity and then, and, you know, and I, uh, you know, then I learned some mathematics and mathematicians use most of the Greek letters, except upsilon. Um, and um, uh, so, so um, uh, 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 once again, uh, every word, has a number, so you don't have to worry about alphabetic order or finding it, and, and you can find your way around with this with this help. Now, now another very important resource uh, available uh, in, in the um, in, in the library is is an inter interlinear dictionary. This is a this is a dictionary that I, I'm sorry, interlinear Bible. Um, in inter interlinear Bible, you've got two. Uh, uh, you, you've got the original Hebrew, and then you've got English, sort of literal, uh, written above it. And in fact, this one not only has the has the, the literal things written above it, but also the Strong's numbers. And so, if, so if I, you know, this Hebrew word is is, is Strong number 70, 7130. So I can find it and find out what it you know what it means and everything. Um, so it's it's uh, it's very helpful. Uh, even though I don't read Hebrew, it was very helpful to see um, the order in which the words occurred and sort of get some feeling for the flow of the of, uh, of the thing. Um, I'll come back to that later. Actually, the, um, you, the the English goes backwards too. So so he, Hebrew goes right to left, and and then you have to read this: uh, the eater, behold, your people are women in your midst. It says your in midst, but it's actually in your midst, and to your enemies, and so on. Is is this? Okay. So, so you got also interlinear Greek and English. Um, the, the, I hate to look at this; it's, the typography is so awful. But uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, so it's, so it'd be much better to have this the, the software later. But anyway, the information is there. The information is there. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, there's also um, there's also a tr tremendous scholarly work edited by Kittle. It's uh, I don't know 20 volumes uh, um, that that have every word, every important word. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, scholars all around the world would would write um, an article, just like an encyclopedia article, about all uses of that word not only in the Bible, but in, in other contemporary literature. Um, and so uh, uh, when you come to a, a, a case where there's a kind of a tough one, where you re really want to learn about the nuances uh, and, and, and find, find out about that word in history and in, in, in writings of, of uh, you know, uh, Plato or whatever for Greek words or other, other things from, uh, fr from other Hebrew documents, um, then uh, you, you, you turn to uh, to, to Kittle, the, uh, there's one for there's one big set for uh, he, Greek and one big set for for Hebrew. Um, I only I only use that uh, 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 in a condensed form. There's a, there's, a, there's a one volume condensation that came out in the in the early 80s. Uh, so uh, anyway, there's these resources that have been made by by the scholars, and they're actually uh, make it so that it's it's not only possible for, for for somebody to do their own translation, but fun. I, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, to, uh, at least for 
person like me to, to play around with this and learn a little bit about these languages. Um, and uh, 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 and it, even more fun if I could just do it for myself and not have to publish it afterwards uh, and, and, you know, and take responsibility for the errors. But as I said, even so, uh, if there are mistakes, uh, I, I, I could be sure that somebody else had made the same mistake too. So, um, so um, uh, let me show you now some concrete examples. I don't like to just talk abstractly. Uh, let's take Genesis 3.16, uh, first one I, I, uh, I had to tackle. Let me see, I can, I'm going to save this one out. Um, Genesis 3.16, uh, immediately when I started the 3.16 project, I got, into, uh, I got into meaty stuff. This is women's liberation coming in here. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And this is the King James translation, which came out uh, 1611 or something like that, early 1600s. And um, the, uh, you can compare that to the New English Bible, which when was that? 60s, I think. Um, which was the first major uh, New English translation to, to occur after 1600s. Uh, to the woman he said, I will increase your labor and your groaning, and in labor you shall bear children, you shall be eager for your husband, and he shall be your master. Um, take a look at the New, England, New Jerusalem Bible. There, there was a Jerusalem Bible, and then there was a New Jerusalem Bible. The uh, New Jerusalem Bible came out just about um, a, a month before I left Boston in, in 85, work, uh, beginning to work on the book. To the woman, he said, I shall give you intense pain in childbearing. You will give birth to your children in pain. See, it's labor and, or pain. You, you, your yearning will be for your husband. You will be eager for your husband. He will dominate you. Um, the new, the, the new Revised Standard Version is one, is one of the latest to, to come out. It's the last uh, in, the li in the line of the, of the King James, uh, the, uh, which tends to be a fairly literal translation. Um, and uh, the, this was a major, uh, a major revision of the Revised Standard Version, which came out in 1950. Uh, uh, well, the, the New Testament, the Old Testament, 50. 253, the New Testament in the 40s, but but uh, it, it wasn't I, it wasn't a major. The Re Revised Standard Version w was just sort of a cleaning up of the King James, but the New English was a complete uh, 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 new, new approach. Um, while this Revised Standard Version is the continuation of this long line from the King James of uh, uh, where they try to uh, be fairly literal to the to the original text and. And uh, so uh, greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. This is to be compared with the, uh, with the King James Version from, you know, back here. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Feminist A feminist version. Well, new, the, the, the interesting thing, of course, as I, as I got into uh, uh, this verse is the history of how, how, how people have misinterpreted this idea of domination. Uh, uh, through the years, and that's, that was very interesting, but you have to read the book for the commentary on that. <laughs> but, uh, but in fact, uh, uh, the New Revised Standard is about as feminist as you can get. No, no I guess there is a woman translation, but you have, but, uh, you have to understand that the, woman, that the man is being dominated too, in, in the next verse, if you want to really understand. But anyway, uh, this rule over you, though, that I think isn't, isn't a great translation. Um, it's more like... Uh, uh, it's more like the way uh, um, uh, it, 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 uh, uh, it sort of the sun and the moon. Uh, 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 one one dominates the day and one dominates the night somehow, but they're, but they're not. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, uh, I don't want to get into that right now, actually. Uh, but um, but uh, so here was my translation now, uh, uh, just for for comparison. And uh, uh, well, here I. Uh, so, so um, now I, I, uh, in in my book, I'm trying to make each verse uh, stand on its own. Uh, so I, I did, uh, I did sometimes add a few words to say, instead of saying to the woman he said, you know, I'll say turning to the woman God said, 
in order to set the scene. Um, so, so, so this is, you know, turning wasn't really in the verse, but in fact, uh, the point is that this is a continuation of the story, so I put that in there, and then got, you know, then I, I'll identify pronouns uh, to, so that we know who's talking. Um, uh, so in a few cases, I, I, I felt that it wouldn't stand alone by itself unless I, you know, unless I did that, but I thought that was reasonable. Um, and so um, uh, uh, you see that uh, I got, I, I got, you know, quite a few words in common with, uh, with all of them, but uh, uh, I, 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 I tried to choose them rather carefully, uh, the best of the, uh, of the, the things that I had in, in, in the variety. Now, the very first verse that I, that I translate, that I had to translate, was the John 3.16 verse, uh, which is the one that's so, that's so familiar, uh, God loved the world um, uh, verse, and, and the reason I had to translate it first is because I first had to send the translation to Hermann Zopf, who was the, the calligrapher for this verse, and he would do the calligraphy, send it back to me. I would have this, pr this color printed and send that to all of the other people who are going to be artists for the book. And so, we, so, so this had to be done in the pipeline first, and I had to, I had to get this one, one ready because he had to have, he had to have uh, plenty of time to work on it. And uh, this was the translation of the, uh, of the verse that, that I made at the time. Uh, in this case, I... Uh, it was a little, a little different. I, I tried to make the translation um, actually uh, sort of maximally different from the, the familiar text, uh, uh, just because it w the familiar text was so familiar that people couldn't understand it anymore. They've heard it so many times; it doesn't make you know it doesn't mean anything anymore. So uh, uh, I, I chose different words, even though the uh, familiar words might have been um, m might have been better. Um, but this was my this was the first one I translated, and, and af after the book was published, I realized that it was it was by far the worst translation in the in, in the book, um, and uh, um, but uh, so I, I I'll read it because I know that uh, maybe you can't see in the back row yet. So my translation here: was, Yes, God loved the world so much that He gave His only child, so that all people with faith in Him can escape destruction and live forever. Um, now, uh, I made two, uh, two errors that I, uh, but I didn't realize it uh, until, uh, until um, going through the exercise of translating all the other verses and then learning a lot more about the Bible during the next year. Uh, the first uh, error that I made is, is uh, when I said, God loved the world so much that um, in the original Greek, it's sort of, uh, you know, the, the, or, the old translation is God so loved the world. Uh, but I didn't realize that the author of this gospel um, has, a, has a, 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 a kind of peculiar way of pointing, of, of, of having sentences that point to the, that, that point ahead instead of backwards. Um, and, uh, and so uh, the, the actual meaning of it is, um, it, not that he loved it so much, but he loved it so in, in, in this way. Um, and and uh, w once you get used to the uh, to the Gospel of John and other the the, the, the letter of First John, and so on, you see that this kind this style uh, comes on all the time. That 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 uh, there's something that points to the, to the thing coming out. Um, the other the other mistake I made here um, is uh, at the end of the. Verse when I said "live forever," the original uh, is saying "have eternal life," and uh, um, I had always thought eternal life meant you know live forever, but um, uh, in fact, and in fact, it does in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but in uh, in John, um, uh, there's other places where it says this is what eternal life means, and in fact, when you start to understand the 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 phrase "eternal life" as used in the Gospel of John, it's it's uh, very much analogous to uh, uh, to the phrase uh, uh, the kingdom of God or uh, or the kingdom of heaven in the other in the other gospels, and uh, in fact uh, somebody uh, a few years ago came out with a translation of the other gospels where he where he translates it the God movement, which I think is a really a really nice. Uh, uh, way to translate this idea of a kingdom of God to uh, to Americans, but um, 
Uh, but but Paul Tillich, uh, 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 th I found uh, after coming here to Boston that that he had uh, uh, also talked about this in one of his sermons he gave in the in the 40s, and I saw a reprint of that. And he said, he, he, "Yeah, you see, you have to understand, eternal life is a is a present gift. A person who listens to Christ as eternity already is no longer subject to the driving of time. The, the idea of uh, that that you're living in in eternal life and." Uh, 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 as you know, it's an ongoing process, uh, sort of timeless thing, um, is uh, is really the way this this fo this fourth gospel uh, 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 means the f by the phrase eternal life. It doesn't mean by and by, but it means now as well. So my new translation, I finally made uh, after after several years went by and the book after the book had come out, I just uh, and I kept. Uh, Thinking about what, these two errors I made in this trans, in this translation, I I said uh, I decided I would uh, I, I would like to actually uh, uh, try try again, and I and I um, and I made another translation and I and I wrote to Hermann Zopf, who was the, the calligrapher, and uh, and told him uh, 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 you know it, 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 see he had originally said I could keep the the artwork that he gave me for the. Uh, uh, for the book, and uh, this is kind of uh, this. This was, of course, very nice because the the artist, uh, the other artist, we had the understanding that it was their property, and I was only paying for the uh, right to to, uh, 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 to reproduce it. But but he said I could keep the original artwork. Uh, but then, uh, 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 well, to make a long story short, the artwork traveled around the world, and and uh, all the all the calligraphers decided to 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 uh, keep it in a permanent collection that's now at the San Francisco Public Library and um, and so uh, I didn't have uh, I, I didn't have the original so I said Herman I'd like to make a new translation of this verse and can you uh, 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 you do have time to uh, to do that one the new one for me and actually uh, this was this was great because he he sent it to me as a birthday present uh, two or three years ago and here's the so here's the new translation, which uh, might not be perfect, but anyway, it's better than it, than it was before. Now, uh, I had also planned the translation so that you could have the word gospel in the uh, in there. In fact, that was also true in King James. God so loved the world, it, you, it, 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 it could uh, it, it, it fit in there. But uh, but uh, first of all, I said yes. This is how God loved the world. Colon. In other words, instead of God loved the world so much. And then at the end, you escape destruction and live a full life now and forever. And, and this, I, this, is, this is the, I believe, the uh, a much better translation of the thing of what literally is eternal life, uh, where it means really something uh, that's going on now and forever. And uh, I understand Paul Tillich uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, after giving that sermon, I, I quoted from. Uh, I actually wrote a book called uh, uh, the. Um, uh, what is it? Not, not the eternal now. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's a uh, uh, it, uh, now this artwork is actually downloadable from, uh, on the web. If you go to that URL that I showed you before, you can click and you know and get the postscript file that that will that will that will, that will do this, and you can paste it into your copy of the book. And so, it's <laughs> now. Um, uh, there was, I, as I said, every mistake I made uh, in the other places I, I would have been made by some other, by some other expert. Except, uh, it, but there is an exception to that. There's one, there's one case where my translation of of, of one of the three sixteen verses is different from any that uh, that is in any Bible I've ever seen, and I and I can't believe that any other any Bible other Bible will come out with the same translation that I have. But you, but when I show you, you'll, you'll understand. This is Mark three sixteen. Jesus, Jesus chose Simon and gave him a new name, Rock. Now, in all the other translations of the Bible, they'll call him Peter instead of Rock. But the fact is that at the time, at the time when Jesus called him Rock, there was no such name as Peter. There was nobody else living around was had the name Peter. It wasn't a, you know it wasn't a common name. In fact, somebody found an example of a Peter uh, a 300 B.C. in one of the, you know in Egypt uh, is the only uh, in, in, in the Aramaic equivalent of Peter. Um, and then uh, and, and then not again for some time after 
And so it wasn't a name. In, in other words, it, it, was, it was very shocking to, uh, at the time this, this happened that, he, that somebody would, would, would have this name Rock. You know, we have, uh, uh, we have a few Rockies uh, now too, but, uh, but, but uh, so in order, to, in order to translate this to, uh, to show the, uh, uh, the impact that it would have had um, uh, when, when the gospel was written, um, I figured that, this, that it really should be translated in this way, although now we do have to understand that this is, this is now a common name, Peter. Um, I show you a translation of Jonah for uh, this Jonah four six, which is Jonah three sixteen. If you, because uh, uh, you got to go into chapter four. God made a plant spring up over Jonah's head to give him some shade and to calm him down. This this plant made jo Jonah very happy. Okay. Now, what? Okay. So so this is a. Uh, uh, now, in this case, uh, there, there actually was a long history of, 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 of a fight between St. Augustine and St. Jerome on how to translate the name of this plant um, uh, because uh, uh, the, 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 Greek Bi the Greek Bible that was used in, uh, in, the, in, in the, uh, the churches uh, at that time before they had a Latin Bible um, uh, had a bad translation of, of, of this plant. And, and St. Jerome uh, uh, was living in the area where this plant was, was, was common as Kikion, I don't know how to pronounce it, and, uh, and, and so, so Jerome used the actual, uh, 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 you know, the correct version, and, and there were riots, I mean, in, 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 the, in the churches, and, and uh, saying, you know, um, we knew it was the other kind of plant because it was in the Greek that way, in the Greek translation that way, and if and if that had been a bad translation, surely Jesus would have told us that it was a bad translation. So, so, um, uh, and so, uh, Saint Augustine wrote to Saint Jerome, uh, telling him to change it, uh, uh, you know, because uh, uh, the Greek was the, the the Greek translation is the one that had been used by the apostles, and and uh, uh, people were accustomed to it. They does not rock the boat, and so on. Uh, I, I sidestepped that just by just saying a plant, you know, um, and uh, but but also I tried in this in this uh, in this case to um, uh, to write the translation something like a, a children's story or a fable because uh, because the book of Jonah is is it, it has has that general character. So um, now uh, I'd like to t talk a little bit about he Hebrew poetry because that was the most interesting. Uh, uh, Things of, of of translation, um, and and the uh, uh, the psalm that, uh, and the and the prophets are are uh, are often speaking in poetry. Now, um, uh, the 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 uh, convention in Hebrew poetry is to have rhymes of sense instead of rhymes of sound. So. Uh, uh, the more you the more you read it you you, you you'll realize that, that that you say the same thing from two uh, different points of view it's like you know it's like seeing something with in stereo and um, uh, uh, and, and, and so there's there, there's often often uh, this this parallelism uh, I tried to still make the the translations poetic and and, and parallel in some ways and uh, this um, uh, by the way uh, Anna um, it, uh, it's kind of interesting that women's uh, uh, issues uh, have, uh, arise in in three of the 316 verses, um, and, uh, and 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 Judith Wegner, uh, many of you know Peter Wegner at Brown University. His wife uh, 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 teaches courses in university about the, uh, about women's issues in in, in the uh, uh, in the Hebrew culture, and the and uh, she was amazed. Uh, that sort of the three key verses of, happen to all be 316. Uh, this pure, pure chant. But anyway, uh, uh, here um, uh, is, listen to this, you fat cows of Bashan, you women who live on the hill of Samaria, you who squeeze the powerless and crush the penniless, you who order your husbands to bring lots of drinks. This is the, this, now Amos was, was a guy who really said it like it is. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, the uh, up in uh, up in Samaria, uh, th there was a lot of uh, of, of exploitation, and, and uh, he he came from the hill country and, and, and now uh, 
Um, here's Habakkuk 316. Um, it, here I, um, I, I tried also, when I'm translating poetry, I tried to use uh, uh, as much as I could um, ideas of, of English poetry, just, just because it is poetry. Uh, I didn't emphasize this in the book, but actually I did try this, so I tried to have, uh, you know, rhythm in here. So I heard this and my body quakes, my pale lips quivered at the sound, my bones began to totter and I shook in terror where I stood. I calmly wait for days to come when plunderers will meet with grief. Okay, now that, it, it, you know, it scans anyway. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I, I did that intentionally, where, although uh, I didn't really intend to read it, so, so da 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 da. Um, I, I, I tried to, uh, um, uh, to, re to retain uh, poetry if I could, uh, while being faithful to the, uh, to, to the nuances of the text. Um, now, another thing that occurs in, a, in about a dozen places in, in the Bible is uh, the idea of an alphabetic poem. There's, people are, are disputing at, at why this is done, but, uh, uh, but I'll show you the Lamentations chapter 3, uh, the beginning of Lamentations chapter 3. Here's this from this, this uh, Hebrew interlinear Bible. Um, I've put a, um, I've highlighted the first, le the first letter of every verse. The first three verses start with Aleph. The next three verses start with Beth. The next three start with Gimel. Um, the next is Daleth, I guess. And then the next uh, three are whatever it is, one of these. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, uh, and then the sixth one is, is the Vav, um, uh, which is, gets into verse 16 is where, is where I had to do it. Um, and so... Uh, 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 th there's three times 22 verses in this uh, in this chapter, and uh, uh, I, you know it's it was it's it's uh, means that the person who wrote it uh, uh, tried a little harder to get uh, you know to have to have a form. It's like a sonnet or something where you have a certain form that you that, that you go with. Uh, Michael Raven said that there were some cases where he, where the person would take the uh, uh, the, the first letter would, would spell the name of the author. Um, uh, I, uh, in, in my book, Concrete Mathematics, my co-author, Oren Potashnik, uh, said he was going to rewrite my foreword so that the first letters of, the fir of, uh, of, uh, of, of 14 lines, the first 14 lines in the preface, would actually correspond to uh, a sonnet that he wrote for his wife. Uh, the first letters of the sonnet that he wrote for his wife. I said it was impossible for him to do it, and, but he did it. He had a hyphenate in one place. Uh, but, uh, but I, uh, you, you know, that's one of the things that uh, I guess I never told anybody else before. But, that, you know, uh, but, but you're supposed to read it and still think it's very smooth and it wasn't contract. Um, now, now this, uh, um, uh, so, so maybe people did it because it's easier to, 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 to remember it. Um, uh, maybe just because it, you know, it, um, it was uh, it was it was uh, something that makes the artist work a little harder. Anyway, um, uh, not often is it translated also alphabetically, but uh, there are a few cases of, of it in the Jerusalem Bible. And here was here was uh, the, the the most elaborate is in in the translation by by Ronald Knox. Um, uh, in the, uh, who was uh, uh, the, the main Catholic scholar at Oxford during the uh, 30s, 40s. And, uh, and you see here this chapter, so he has A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 and so on in his, in his translation. And if we look up closely, uh, when we get to verse 16, uh, files all my teeth with hard gravel stones, bids me feed on ashes. Um, far away is my old old content and so on. So, so my translation, um, I used Vav, the, 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 I used the Hebrew letter V, v so, so, so my translation of verse uh, 16 was, viciously he ground my teeth on gravel, trampling me in dust and ashes. Um, this uh, also, I, 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 I worked to get the, the dirge meter uh, in, in this verse, the, in the Lamentations, they used the dirge meter, which was, uh, I don't know, three feet tall by two feet or four feet far away, three, I forget. Viciously, he ground my teeth on gravel, trampling me in dust and ashes. 
then I, 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 just to make sure that I could do it, if I had to do verse 17 and 18, I, you know, villainy destroyed the peace I longed for, memories of joy soon vanished. Very soon my life will be concluded, all my hope in God seems wasted. This is part of a, you know, kind of a downer, and it gets, it gets better at the end. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, it, uh, of course, the, uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, and this was a, this was a, a, a lament. And uh, this... Um, uh, but the dirge meter is was 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 something that I that, that I was uh, tried to get in and and, and uh, luckily it wasn't that impossible to uh, uh, to achieve. Um, th this Isaiah uh, verse is is another case where where uh, th things worked out reasonably well uh, from from Hebrew to English. Uh, God says the women in this here we are you see again uh, the women in this city are so haughty. They strut around with heads held high, flirting with their eyes. They mince along with dainty steps, jingling with their feet. That has a kind of a, 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 a ring to it that, that, that just sort of fell out naturally. And in the psalm, um, I, I, it was even possible to, to, to make it rhyme. I'll lay me down in peace and go to sleep, for you alone, O oh God, my safety keep. And, and uh, I, I believe this is a faithful a faithful translation of the Hebrew poem. Um, my, uh, uh, oh, I wanted to say one more thing about Knox before I, I be, uh, his his uh, translation of the Bible. Uh, it's amazing that I that it's not in print. Uh, I, I could only find one copy in the in the Cambridge Library in, in at at Radcliffe, uh, is where, where I made this slide from, and uh, they've just republished the new his translation of the New Testament in paperback. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's an amazingly interesting translation, and 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 uh, quite he had to translate the the Latin uh, Bible into English because the. the that was the Catholic preference in those days, um, but then he had footnotes explaining how the Latin differed from the Greek, and so on. So it's a, it, it's a, it's a forgotten translation of the Bible. Uh, and he, he wrote a, a really charming little book called Englishing the Bible, that um, uh, that I, uh, uh, th where he he talks about the difference between a literal translation and a literary translation. And uh, he, he, of course, he speaks very British. He says. You, you have to play cat's cradle with almost every sentence in the New Testament if you want to decide how an Englishman would have said the same thing. And that's what I'm trying to do in these in, in these things is to say, you know, uh, if it if if I'm putting it into English, uh, to to have the sense of the uh, of the original uh, as well as uh, as well as I can can understand it. Um, um, the, sometimes the trans, it's, it's it's impossible to, to and it's impossible to make a perfect translation in any case. But but it's um, but uh, uh, some you know, amazing things are are, are possible. I, uh, I I think some of you know about this novel in French by Georges Perec called La, La Disparition. It's written entirely without the letter E, and the uh, you know the uh, the hero is Anton Vowell, V O W L. <laughs> and uh, and it's a novel. It goes on, and it, but that, but the, but it was translated into English, and the translation into English is a void, a void, and it has no letter e in the entire translation of the novel. So so uh, uh, you know, just in the in the textbook, the the the, the Russian uh, translation of my tech manual, um, uh, I had an appendix where I worked very hard to make an English example. So that uh, 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 so that it would illustrate most of the basic ideas of tech all on one page, and on the opposite page you would you would see what gets typeset from the thing on the left. And uh, I had to work very hard to so everything uh, I could only use you know 62 letters on a line or something like this. And uh, and in the Russian translation it was incredibly brilliant. Uh, uh, he uh, it, uh, all, Russian words are about 15% uh, longer than English words, so he had to. He had he had uh, 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 to to really think how, how he was going to get it, but he he translated the whole thing, so it still is an example of all the features of tech still using using Russian. Um, now, here's the, this verse that is one of the ones that I like that that I that that fell together uh, uh, the best uh, almost. Uh, in, uh, I used to call this Nahum, but uh, now that I know people named Nahum, I. I tend to call them Nachum. Nachum 316. Um, your merchants outnumbered the stars in the sky. 
grub, grub worms strip, then off they fly. Now, um, uh, the reason I like this is because it, if you understand the, the, the prophecy of Nahum, it was very terse and kind of um, uh, enigmatic, like, uh, you know, so, like some uh, Chinese philosophers or something. Um, and, uh, I, and so I, I, I also wanted to preserve the terseness and, and the ambiguity of what is the, the uh, grub worm strip. Uh, there's, two, there's two senses you, you can say that, that, that these, uh, that these uh, grub worms, uh, these, the, these uh, baby locusts are, are stripping the, the, uh, um, the, 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 the plants. Um, or uh, you can also say that these locusts shed their skin. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so stripping in a different sense, but the word strip still works for, in English for, for both meanings. And even, even I could rhyme sky with fly and so on. So, so um, uh, th this one re worked out, uh, I think, to have a fairly good sense of the, uh, of the original. Well, now um, go to the New Testament. Um, in the New Testament, uh, one of the first Timothy 316 is one of the most amazing verses in the New Testament and I have to show it to you in Greek um, because it's a poem in Greek uh, but it's a it's a it's a it's a different kind of a poem than we than we have but it's clearly a poem um, and uh, my pronunciation of Greek will be entirely wrong but uh, but when you get to the sec to the end of this part see, we know that true religion is a great mystery Christ was and then there's six lines coming after this uh, which I've translated, revealed in body, justified in spirit, witnessed by angels, proclaimed to pagan, trusted on earth, glorified in heaven. The Greek for this looks like this. It says, manifested in flesh. It was, uh, oh God, uh, 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 well, the main thing is, it ends with the, this theta and eta. So it's, it's, it's something, ephenorothi, en sarki. Uh, then it's edekaiothi, uh, en so uh, it again ends with a, th a, th a theta and an eta, and then n. Uh, here it's a hofthi, uh, uh, and here it's not n, but it's angolois. Uh, interesting about Greek, if you have two gammas in a row, you say ng instead of gg. So angels, angolis. Uh, um, uh, so, so again, a th and an n. And then, you know, the same thing, ekerthi. And na nations, epithy, and cosmo, cosmo on in the and doxy. So, so the uh, idea here is it's 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 clearly uh, it, it's clearly a, 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 a poetic construction, probably a hymn, and um, uh, none of the English translations uh, retained that. So, I, so I, I I worked hard so that I could make it uh, uh, parallel. Of course, I couldn't make it rhyme too, but the, but here it's it's a. You know, and then I had to decide how I was going to punctuate it. Uh, so, um, there's six verses, and uh, and uh, some authors break it down into three plus three, and others say it's two plus two plus two. I, I think two plus two is. I, I prefer two plus two plus two. It's, it's kind of like my lectures in this series. I'm doing two lectures, and then and then two more. Um, but um, uh, there's there's this body spirit. There's the uh, uh, you know there's the angels, pagans, the earth, heaven. It's always a uh, paired with something uh, uh, supernatural, with something natural, um, in this in this poem. So uh, uh, it, the Greek was the original was so amazing. I, I wanted very badly to do, to have the English uh, correspond to it. Um, Second Timothy three sixteen is another very, very famous verse, and in fact, very, uh, endless fights have been made about about exactly what it means. Um, all scripture inspired by God is beneficial for principles, for persuasion, for correction, and for education about what is right. Uh, this verse um, uh, is ambiguous in the Greek as to what it means, it, as to whether it's saying that all scripture is inspired by God or whether it's saying that all of the scripture that happened to have been inspired by God is, is, is beneficial. Uh, uh, you know. So I work hard to make a translation that would be equally ambiguous. <laughs> In other words, if the original is, is ambiguous, the English should be ambiguous too, then you can, then you can discuss the ambiguity. Um, 
the hardest one of that kind, uh, I, I was not able to, to, to retain the ambiguity in, in 1 Peter 3.16. Um, so you'll find if you look at uh, if you look at a dozen translations, you'll find uh, uh, slightly more than half of them uh, disagreeing with me, and, and about 40, 30, 40 percent agreeing with the way one I had to change. But but uh, this one, I'll read it to you: Maintain goodwill. Then, if people denounce you as criminals, they will be ashamed of themselves for slandering your Christian conduct. Um, the the Greek word that I've translated, maintain goodwill in other translations says, uh, keep your conscience clear. Um, uh, the, the Greek word, I can't remember the, what it was, syndiki, something, it, it, it's translated as conscience. But there's two meanings of the Greek word for conscience. One is the, the, your, this, this uh, kind of little voice that, that talks to you sometimes when you're doing something wrong. You know, your, um, uh, which is what we often think of as conscience. But the other meaning, uh, equally likely in, in, in Greek text, is this, 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 this uh, sense uh, that you have with respect to the community. Um, and uh, uh, so, so how, how you uh, are to the others. And I chose uh, uh, that it really meant the other one. It wasn't keep your conscience clear, but maintain goodwill. Uh, uh, to the others, and, I, and there was no way I could find an English word that would have the same, uh, the same ambiguity. That at least I couldn't think of it. And uh, uh, the, how did I? So I, I had to, I had to take a stand on this one. And uh, so I, so I studied the, uh, all the other occurrences of the word conscience uh, in in First Peter and uh, and as and the context and so on until I finally decided that I would vote for this one. So that was the hardest verse of all to translate. The easiest verse is what I'll, is what I'll finish with. Uh, the easiest verse was 2 Thessalonians 3.16. It says, May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways. The Lord be with you all. I'll show you the King James Bible here. Uh, it says, Now, instead of may, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. Well, means instead of ways. Here's the New English Bible. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways. Hey. Um, I added a comma. Uh, um, the New Jerusalem Bible. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. The Lord be with you all is common, you see, to every, every, every translation. The New Revised Standard Version had to do it slightly different. The Lord be with all of you. Um, <laughs> May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and always. In this case, uh, Paul was writing in English pretty much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, um, so uh, uh, this morning at breakfast, I was reading a book by Peter Gomes uh, called The Good Book, which, which, uh, which is an introduction to the Bible. And, I, and at the beginning, he's... He, he said something that I thought I wanted to, to quote to you. He said, the notion that the texts of the Bible have meaning and integrity, intention, context, and subtext, that they're part of an enormous history of interpretation that has long involved some of the greatest thinkers in the history of the world, is a notion often lost on those for whom the text is just one more of the many ways the church provides to massage the egos of its members. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, what, what I found when I, that this decision that I made to do my own translations, even though I didn't know Hebrew or Greek, one of the best decisions ever in my life because it, this is the absolute best way to, to, to find out what you don't understand is when you try to put something in your own words. And, and, and since it, this was so, uh, if I had just been doing the input and, you know, and looking at, at, at other translations and not actually trying to output saying, which, what, what, how would I actually say this if I was writing for my, my children? In fact, I, I, I tried to uh, do my translation. I had my children in mind, and they were about you know, 20 years old at the time. Uh, so I was thinking this would be a translation that they would understand. Um, and... Uh, 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 so, so this uh, uh, all, all the time I was coming to grips with with shades of meaning that I just couldn't uh, uh, would never have have realized were 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 in doubt if I was just inputting, but having to output it and, and say what and say try to make the uh, uh, a good translation uh, is, a, is a tremendous uh, uh, help to your education. And so, uh, and so, I tried this out with with groups. Actually, I, uh, um, I I've done it twice now, 
Um, and I, uh, I don't make a career of this, so, so maybe you know, every five years I'll do it again. Um, where where I, I went with, uh, well the first time, uh, I went with about uh, 20, 25 people to a, uh, uh, to a retreat center in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And uh, we, uh, we, we got there on Friday night and uh, we left on Sunday noon. And uh, on Friday night, oh, and, and we brought with us about 100 reference books. Um, like, you know, this, uh, we, we brought a concordance, the interlinear Bibles, we brought commentaries. Uh, we decided we were going to take a verse out of the book of, out of, the book of Luke. And uh, so we brought uh, all the commentaries on Luke that we could find in, in all the church libraries in Palo Alto. And, and we took them to the hills in Santa Cruz. And uh, on Friday night, we rolled dice to choose a verse. And um, and I cautioned people that this ro this rolling dice wasn't magic. It was it was uh, and, and if the verse turns out that we're going to fall in love with it, it 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 was just that we could have done it with other verses too. But we wanted to we didn't want uh, to have any any possibility that it was planned in advance what we were, what we were going to do. And uh, so so we rolled the verse and it, and then we went to sleep. And I didn't know if it was going to be a dud or, or or terrible or what, but. But uh, I had the confidence that the 316s came out okay, so the random verse would probably be okay. And uh, uh, lo and behold, uh, uh, on Saturday morning, when we woke up, uh, I found out that Yah was a very interesting verse indeed. And, uh, and uh, we, we, uh, studied, uh, we studied it by looking at the, uh, you know, with these, with these helps and, f and looking up each word in it, fi finding the, uh, the, way, the way it was uh, translated in different translations. Um, and uh, then we broke into groups and each group uh, uh, made their own translation, a group of four people. Uh, and and you know, somebody wanted to make a translation uh, uh, literal. Someone wanted to make it a, 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 a very modern paraphrase. Um, and, uh, the, and, and one of the groups uh, decided to make it into a hymn, actually, and, and, and put it into poetry. And, and, uh, and we actually uh, wrote some music for that hymn afterwards and performed it in the worship service on Sunday morning. Um, uh, but it was it was the same for for the whole group. We we just found out that it was really an interesting way to for, for edu educational uh, to try putting uh, the, the Bible into your own words uh, it, as as a way of getting into what the what what the what the thing means. And you can do it with the Bible because there is in existence all this scholarship that the, that the experts have have prepared. I, I did it again once with uh, with college grads with, with Stanford grad students and. Uh, there we had only about ten people, but again it was uh, we spent and we spent one, only one day on it. But again, a uh, uh, very positive uh, experience. My my rule when I rule when I when I when I rolled the dice was that uh, I wasn't going to take anything. I wasn't going to allow anything in chapter three um, because I uh, you know I already been there and done that. So so uh, uh, I wanted to, to learn a different part of Luke. Um, and also, if the verse didn't if it didn't have something like sixteen words in it, we would we would take two verses. I didn't want to get a real short one, but uh, we didn't have to use that that constraint. But that, but uh, I recommend that to to uh, 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 to anyone who wants to, uh, uh, to to get into the Bible, don't read what other people have said about it. Say yourself your own thing about it, uh, but but use the the the, the, the resources that are available, uh, uh, which which you can do even though you have just a, an ordinary a non theological education. Well, I told you my sense of time is off, uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm ready for questions now anyway. <laughs> yes? Uh, Michael Hofstadter's most recent book is La Fondo de Moreau, and he uses a similar vehicle for a small French poem. I wonder if you were familiar with that and if you had any comments on that. Oh, he, Comments on, on Doug Hofstadter's uh, the Tom Bo No, I, 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 it sounds interesting, but I don't know anything. Sorry. Uh, he's, he's uh, I, I, I just... Uh, Corresponded with him, though, be, uh, with respect to Smolians, uh, which I'm going to be bringing up in a f future lecture. Yes. Is, is the original Greek and Hebrew absolutely certain? Or no, no. Oh, I should have mentioned that. Uh, that was something that 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 I really was. Uh, in, in, in essentially every one of the 316s, there there are quite a, a lot of differences in the manuscripts. You know, there are hundreds of manuscripts, and this, and and the scholars have collated these manuscripts and. And had to take a, a, a majority opinion as to which uh, of the things are are are, uh, are, are the, which are the best manuscripts, and so, certainly things have been you know er, errors that copying have 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 gone on because uh, uh, it's very easy for 
for for things to change over that many years and with the, with the old technology. So, so um, uh, there th there are these so-called textual problems uh, uh, everywhere. And if if you look at uh, if you look at 20 different translations of the Bible, there will be footnotes saying you know Hebrew obscure, or it'll say you know some some uh, witnesses read that witnesses mean uh, parchments, you know, uh, manuscripts, um, uh, and uh, and each. Uh, and almost all the translations will <coughs> will have different subset, set of footnotes. Um, but if you look at the real scholarly editions, uh, <coughs> they'll show all of these all of these variations. And the only the, only the, the translators will, will will list the ones that they think are significant. But in fact, uh, the, uh, they're only giving us a very small tip of the iceberg on that. So a lot of judgment is made uh, uh, on all these on all these texts. Um, and uh, well, uh, um, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, scholar who, who worked on this, I think, was Erasmus, who, 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 who did the, uh, the major part of, uh, of the work in the, uh, uh, you know, the 16th century. But then uh, uh, his work had been continued by many, many generations of, of, of scholars. And they, they uh, are, are, have some pretty good ideas so, so that when it comes down to a footnote that appears now, it's mostly uh, it's it's mostly what, things where there's still uh, 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 a lot of question about which is really the best manuscript. But but uh, there is no uh, there is no uh, uh, you know this, these things weren't written digital digital form um, uh, and uh, uh, so so um, uh, I, I said last time that when I when I studied the 316 verse I I looked at all the textual problems for that verse to, to, to see what the scholars were saying about it. Uh, but when it came to the 317 and 315 and so on for the context, I didn't look into that. I just, uh, I, I just read what, uh, what, the, what the majority opinion was on, on these things. But I, but I got enough to understand. Uh, for example, there was one case where the Dead Sea Scrolls had a better reading than all of the existent uh, Hebrew manuscripts. It, uh, I think it was in Samuel, 1 Samuel, because that uh, the, the the, man, the the Hebrew text of First Samuel had, was known to have lots of uh, of of, uh, of of problems. Uh, yeah. You've used uh, the word better or you know comparison, yeah. but you really haven't told us what your standard was. That's true. There is no there is no best translation uh, because it depends on on what your standard is, and <laughs> and uh, it's the same. There's no best computer program. Uh, you know, they, it, uh, and 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 all these things. We'll talk about aesthetics next week, but but uh, there is no, but there are different kinds of beauty, and you or, or different kinds of, of of things that you're going for. So if you're trying to, uh, so so uh, like you know, translation for um, uh, for a child will be different from translation from an adult, for tr different from a for a translation for a, uh, a theologian, um, and. Uh, uh, I, I, I was a aiming my translation for for my children, um, who, who at that time were, as I said, about 20 years old. Um, uh, but you 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 have to aim it at, at something, and and so and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, that the people uh, who um, who did these other translations aren't going to look at my translation and say, oh, I should have done it that way, uh, you know. Although. Uh, um, uh, well, some of these aren't bad, but uh, uh, but uh, for, but you know I I, I, um, I I figured at the rate I I did these translations I could have finished the whole Bible in 65 years, um, and the, and uh, 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 maybe I would have gotten a little better at it, you know after a few years, but uh, but uh, uh, but uh, it's really uh, it, it's a really serious uh, 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 difficult job, and he, and these people. Uh, 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 might very well th uh, believe that their translations are much better than mine, uh, uh, e e e but they didn't have as much time to put on e e in it as I did. See, you know, because I was only I was only doing these verses that, are p for the most part, are are uh, aren't, aren't special. It's a question up here. No, it's not. It's not uh, radical difference uh, uh, very often. Um, 
but uh, but I do uh, but but in in the book I do discuss uh, maybe three or four cases where where the different manuscripts uh, w you know if you if you look at uh, some uh, uh, s s some manuscripts you you'd get it you'd get a different idea uh, impression of it um, but it, but uh, so that's uh, say three, one out of twenty or something uh, of those random verses but. But uh, still, it wasn't a major. It wasn't radical different. Um, in 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 First Timothy three sixteen, there is a there is a, a big textual problem in the in the beginning before the poem starts. Uh, in the beginning, there where where some manuscripts uh, uh, were, uh, were, were were rigged to to give an extra proof of the Trinity. Um, and uh, all scholars have, have have debunked that by now, but uh, but uh, it was uh, it, it wasn't uh, uh, you know the, the, uh, it wasn't until uh, 1700 or so, 1750 when 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 people nailed the culprit on that one. Um, okay. Right. So, 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 so the the translation is is done by humans, and we and uh, you also have the have to re, to re, to to say, well, what does this have to do with God? And um, because the you know the Bible is also uh, an icon, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's it's there's some you know there's a word called bibliolatry, which says you know worship of the Bible. Um, uh, instead of God, um, so it, it can some, it's, can sometimes get uh, you know, the Bible can be uh, can be your God if you take it too seriously. But I, uh, I mean, too as if it's too um, uh, uh, too sacred, not realizing the the, the human uh, context in which it came from, um, and. Um, uh, uh, I, I was thinking that I might have had something that Knox said about this, but but uh, but he was, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, uh, would uh, was a member of uh, was you know he he did a translation of the Bible for a Catholic Church, which was very sensitive to any change in 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 the Latin text at the time. But he got his translation accepted by the but you know through Wales and Scotland and everything. Um, now uh, I. Uh, I consider the, my main uh, uh, sort of goal in life is to uh, is to do God's what God wants me to do, and so I try to understand what does God want me to do, and uh, I believe that uh, by understanding the Bible, I get I get very good clues about this. Uh, and so this is what this is what the connection with, with God is for me. But I don't uh, I, I don't treat it as a magical thing. Uh, that that uh, is uh, is something that I just you know uh, close my eyes, fall down on my knees, and and say, oh, um, I'm going to say these words over and over. I I, I look at it as 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 a, a way that God has been um, uh, giving messages to people and and uh, we're trying to uh, 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 to remove any of the noise that that uh, might have accumulated in this channel, but but. Uh, Yes. Could the process be reversed to try to detect differences in the underlying motivation of the translator? Yes. In fact, well, yes. In fact, you can. The, the, the problem is that all of these things can be circular reasoning, as, as you know. You can you can make it prove any any way you want to go, uh, and so you could you know you can uh, and 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 also. Uh, 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 the, uh, uh, well, clearly, a translator can put uh, uh, can, can put uh, uh, obvious biases in it, and uh, um, so uh, all of these things, uh, being imperfect, um, make it much more much more difficult. But uh, I think I'm going. I, I I came to the conclusion after studying these verses that uh, um, that. Uh, 
it's good that it's challenging. Um, if, if it would all be cut and dried, there wouldn't be any, you uh, get tired of it, it would be boring. Um, but it isn't boring. In fact, it's really rich. Yeah. Um, well, on the theme of it being good if it's challenging, you talked about how the writer has to work harder if there's a constraint of having to do A, 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 B, 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 and you mentioned some of the Frenchmen have a club called the Uli Paul where they have a, yes. you know, they, they have constraints and they see how they affect literature. And I was just wondering if you had any thoughts, because you know a lot about the way constraints operate in computer science. If now that you've worked with the constraints in in translation, either, either in the original or translation, do you have thoughts about the different ways the constraints operate either for the artist or in general. Okay, so, so Georges Perec, who I mentioned, was a member of this Ulipol group, and yeah. uh, I had the, uh, the great honor of attending a meeting of Ulipo, uh actually on March 16th. Uh, so I, uh, 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 it was last year on March 16th, but, uh, but uh, Claude, Claude, Claude Berge is a member, and, he, and, uh, and, so, and Pierre Rolenstein, so, so I know some mathematicians in the group. But anyway, uh, this, uh, yeah, it's a, a wonderful uh, 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 realization that constraints can bring out creativity. And um, uh, I find, in fact, that if you look at my own life and say, what, part, what parts of my life did I have were the most creative, were the ones where you would expect, where it would be the worst uh, uh, conditions in some sense. You know, there was no time to do research. So some calamities were happening. You know, the, uh, the, the kids were screaming, whatever. Um, um, but, uh, you know, I, I would have to do research. Uh, 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 in, in, I'd have to steal time um, uh, for, for the time I was away from Caltech uh, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'd go to a conference, but, I, but I, instead of going to the, to the lectures, I'd sit on the beach and, and do research. And, uh, and um, uh, but uh, d the most hectic years of my life were when I actually came up with the most creative ideas, and so it suggests that the really w way to make a research uh, think tank would be to, you know, take people's nice offices away, you know, and and, and you know, and make them, all, you know, m make them live in a garret. And stuff. Um, uh, it's a heck of a way to run a research center, but uh, in fact, uh, it might it might uh, be that constraints actually bring out. Uh, 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 creativity, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. However, what we have time this time for translation, we will add next week, Don will add more complexity to this whole thing by including art and aesthetics. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Don, for this lecture. And I see you all next week. <laughs>